If you have your favorite classic gaming console, well, there's never a shortage of spooky games. I am the Game Collector, and this is Second Opinion Games, and today I show you a 16-bit Halloween. Second Opinion Games. First up, we have Ghouls and Ghosts. This was originally an arcade machine, which got quickly ported over to the Sega Genesis. And boy, they left nothing behind when they ported this over, because it sounds amazing and the graphics are extremely beautiful. Arthur, this time around, has a few tricks up his sleeve, like a golden suit of armor which he can charge for a devastating power attack. Of course, you have to find it by jumping around random spots in the map in order to activate the treasure chests. When you do, you don't know what's going to be in there. Sometimes it could be a power-up, sometimes it could be a bad guy trying to turn you into a frog or baby or old man or something like that. If you thought Mario had a bad time reliving the same kidnapped princess over and over again, well, you have to give it up to Arthur because not only does he have to deal with his woman constantly being kidnapped, but also he has to fight some of the worst baddies in video game history. Including including Firebrand himself, which he's really quite scary. This game is punishingly difficult, even on the easiest level of difficulty, and you will still have a great time playing it. Probably because it's just so beautiful and never stops being fun to play. Even though this one section here with the tongues, it's freaking nearly impossible. However, if you could withstand that brutal difficulty, you're gonna have a terrific time. The Cap Attack, also for the Sega Genesis, is probably one of the most underrated platformers ever made. Not only does it have a really nice Halloween theme, but you also play as a character named Chuck D. Head. And let me tell you, that's freaking hilarious. You don't start off with a head, more like a face in the chest of a mummy, which then you use that as your weapon, and occasionally you can pick up a head that goes on top of you, which you then throw as another weapon. Just. Imagine continuously using your face as your main form of attack in any video game. And I can tell you, it's probably not going to work out for you too much. However, for Chuck D. Head here, it definitely works out in his favor. There's also potions and coins that you can find scattered amongst the map. And there's even some type of mandatory thing that you have to pick up in each of the worlds. Now, picking this up sometimes can be very easy, like found right in the beginning of the level, or sometimes it can be hidden really well. So you really should explore the world very good in order to find these. However, it's not going to be easy because enemies continuously respawn. Also, you have a few tricks up your sleeve. You could accidentally pull up this window where you can look at all the potions and whatnot that you can find that might give you invincibility or a devastating attack, maybe a little bit of extra reach. Also, when you're jumping, you have this slight floating maneuver similar to box spinning, so you can move your way through the level really quick if you decide to cheese your way through. However, certain levels are designed around this to stop it, so you know what? Just play it, because this is a superb experience, and you'll never have so much fun losing your head. Moving on to the Super Nintendo, we have Zombies Ate My Neighbors. Now, this is a terrific co-op game, but if you're just by yourself, you're still gonna have a pretty fun time. Because of all the crazy weapons that you have at your disposal. You start off with just a squirt gun trying to shoot down zombies, which for some reason, it makes zombies blow up. Maybe there's holy water in here, I'm not quite sure. But eventually, you could pick up silverware, which is good for killing werewolves, and a fire 
fire extinguisher, which is good for freezing most enemies right in their tracks. Luckily, the army is really dumb, as they leave bazookas and bazooka ammo everywhere, which is really nice for making your own path through different parts of the levels. Now there is some keys that you have to pick up to open up locked doors, and saving cheerleaders is something that you should always try and do on a daily basis. After all, you never know how they're going to reward you for your effort. So this game is long, and it is extremely difficult. So every time you play, you might need to put in a password, but I don't recommend you do that at all. Start fresh every single time, because when you use a password, none of the power-ups that you got up until that point carry over. It's the price you pay for the ridiculously easy password to put in. But when you're late in the game, it's nearly impossible without all of the early level pickups that you need to finish this one. If you need a two-player game to play this Halloween, I recommend you play this one. Castlevania X for the Super Nintendo is probably the most underrated Castlevania game of all time. And yeah, I will admit that Rondo of Blood for the TurboGrafx-16 was better, but this one is fine on its own. The difficulty is ramped up heavily. And you know what? I consider that a good thing because Castlevania 4 is way too easy. Even Castlevania on the Genesis I found to be a simple pushover. So this one really ramps up that difficulty. Also, you're continuously playing as just the Belmont here. No added side characters and some of the best 16-bit Castlevania graphics there ever was. The music also sounds incredible in this game and you know what? It's simply draws me in every single time. But the thing I like about the most is that the pickups actually matter. See, the axe is nearly useless in Castlevania 4 because you can always swing at an angle. But in this game, it's required. And more importantly than that, the holy water is by far the best weapon in the game. Also, there's some item crashes. One even works without any sub-weapon whatsoever. So you know what? If you haven't gave this one a try yet, please go back and do so. It really is terrific, and it might just change your mind about what the best 16-bit Castlevania game truly is. <laughs> If you want to play one of the best hidden gems of the Super Nintendo, then I recommend you pick up King of Demons. This game was originally left in Japan, but I'm playing on an English translated reproduction card. They really didn't have to do that much to bring this game over, other than translate a few lines of dialogue in the beginning of the game and at the end. Your daughter was kidnapped by the big bad, and you and your wife have to get her back. Yeah, I said your wife. It's this little tiny fairy on the screen that also acts as an attack dog. Man, she is vicious, kind of like my wife. And boy, does she do a ton of damage. Also, when you die, she will bring you back to life right where you stand. So it's really important to keep her around as long as you physically can. Now you can do human-only runs of this game, but at the end of each level, you are given an option to transform into another demon. If you stick with the same one all the way up to the end, well then you'll get to be a super version of that demon. Or you could switch it up every single time and get a brand new super demon at the end of the game, including the true ending, which is what you really want to do, I guess, even though, honestly, I think the bad ending is a little bit better, but I'm not going to spoil that for you at all here. This is epic. And of course there is a really cool train level here that happens to be my favorite train level in video games. And it's pretty unbelievable in its own right. This is one of the best hidden gems on the Super Nintendo and I strongly recommend everyone gets it.
Time to switch gears to a TurboGrafx 16 classic, Silent Debuggers. If you feel a little claustrophobic, then you better stay the heck away from this game. Also, it's scary. Yeah, as far as 16-bit horror goes, this is the one that leaves my heart in my stomach the freaking longest. Basically, you're a really powered-down dude trying to clear a space station of all of these baddies called Debuggers. Now, they are huge, sometimes eating up the entire space screen and you are very weak and your guns don't hold up that much ammunition so you have to continuously go back into your space station and find spots to either reload or recharge your batteries when your batteries are dead you are dead so make sure you keep them charged and you better use freaking door cells now your weapons don't seem to be super effective against these things but they do get the job done you have a scanner that senses when they are close and this is kind of like one of those hard heartbeat scanners and you never know which way they're coming from. The corridors all wind in and out and it's amazing how much pressure the game can keep on you. There's also a time limit of like 99 minutes per level which starts out really easy but later in the game becomes rather constricting. So don't waste any time with this one. However, hopefully you don't have any heart problems because seriously, this is the most horrified time I've ever had playing a 16-bit game, and it leaves me numb every time I play it. And finally, I'm even going to throw a TurboGrafx-16 CD game on here, The Addams Family. Now, if you really enjoyed the movie, well, pretty much forget it. This doesn't really follow that plot at all, but it does use stills from the movie itself. And you play as a lawyer with an umbrella that fires like a freaking machine gun. Basically, you have to go into the Adams Family home, and if you could find the vault that holds the fortune, you're allowed to keep every penny that you could take out of it, but it's not going to be easy. The Adams family themselves try to freaking murder you at all costs. Basically, it's one of those games where you pick up keys and go into rooms to find more keys. Now, you only are given about three levels and a little bit of life here, and when you die, it's permanently game over. You have to start from the beginning. However, I do think you could beat this whole game in about 20 minutes or so, and maybe five of those minutes are the really long load times. And that's because the game really sets up an atmosphere with ambient sounds and creepy noises. And finally, I get to see what's inside Wednesday Adam's bedroom. <laughs> yeah, it's something that I've been looking forward to for a really long time. And you know what she has? A lot of haunted trinkets, including a freaking Nintendo Entertainment System which tries to attack and kill you. You gotta give it up for the TurboGrafx people. They were really ballsy to put a competitor's console in this game. And you know what? The Addams Family probably isn't one of the best games ever, but it's still something I love and pick up every single Halloween along with all the other games on this list. But of course, that's just my opinion. Thanks for watching. And Mr. Alfred, I hope we have the chance to do it again sometime. But I'm sorry, I don't have any money. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. I had a great time making it. And what are your favorite 16-bit Halloween-based games? Is it Adam's Family for the TurboGrafx CD? Probably not. But you know, King of Demons is a game that I strongly recommend everyone play. Silent Debuggers isn't for everyone. Their learning curve is a bit rough. But once you finally get into it, wow. It's just a lot to take in. And Castlevania X, I mean, some people really hate this game, but honestly, I think it's super underrated, and it is one of my favorite games of all times. So make sure you let me know in the comment box down below if any of these games are games you're interested in, or what games you think I'll be playing in the future. After all, I don't have many friends, and I cannot wait to hear from you. So until later, I will see you again, guys.